All right, what's up guys? This is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend, good trading week, all that. Got to rest your brains. Now we're coming into a new week, pretty data stacked week, and we got some more earnings. So it's definitely gonna be an interesting week. I wouldn't say it's probably gonna be as action packed as last week, but we'll have to see. So before we get into the setups, we're gonna go ahead and get into the economic calendar here. So Monday, July 31st, I don't think either of these is really going to have an impact on the market, but Tuesday, August 1st, we can see we have the S&P final U.S. manufacturing PMIs, so this can definitely move the market. Also have the JOLTS job openings, get a hint into the labor market, see how it's doing. Also have ISM manufacturing and construction spending. So these three, probably the most important for Tuesday, and they can definitely move the market. And then Wednesday, August 2nd, another labor market data set. We have the ADP employment. This can definitely move the market. Thursday, August 3rd, we have initial jobless claims as usual. U.S. Product productivity prelim, S&P final U.S. services, PMI, ISM services, and factory orders. I would say the ISM services and the services PMI probably going to move the market the most. Friday, August 4th, this is the most important day of the week. So we do have the non-farm payrolls. This is usually always the biggest labor market data set that we have probably right next to Joel's job openings I would say the non-farm payrolls is definitely the most important one in terms of the labor market and then we also have the U.S. unemployment rate we have U.S. hourly wages and then hourly wages year over year so pretty stacked week this week in terms of data and then for earnings this week we do have a couple household names coming up so you can see Monday before the open looks like SoFi is reporting great platform by the way I actually have a long-term account with them i enjoy it it's maybe not the best for you know day trading and stuff but they have a lot of other products they offer on the app i recommend to go check it out and then tuesday before I open we have uber pfizer caterpillar merck JetBlue, altria sun power after the close most importantly amd big chip name so this is probably going to make nvidia move and you know the whole chip sector move we also have dvn so this is devon energy it's a pretty big name. I believe it's in the XLE ETF. We also have Starbucks, Pinterest, MicroStrategy for the Bitcoin people. And then Wednesday, we also have CVS. After the close, we got PayPal, Shopify, Qualcomm, Oxy, another energy name, Unity Software, Robinhood, Etsy, Mercado Libre. Thursday before the open, we got Wayfair, Warner Bros, Expedia, Moderna. After the close Thursday, Amazon, Apple, Coinbase. I'd say these three are probably the most anticipated. Also, we have Airbnb, we got SQ, DraftKings, Cloudflare, Wish, PBR, another energy name. And then Friday, not too many big ones. I would say Fubo TV is a pretty cool stock. I mean, it's a it's a small cap, maybe a mid cap. Uh, it's pretty cheap, but used to be a pretty big play during the pandemic. Not so much anymore. And then Nikola used to be a good play until it turned into a scam. And then also FSR, so another EV play. Dominion Energy. And that's for earnings. Those are the ones that stuck out to me the most. And another thing, we're coming into August, which is arguably probably the most choppy month of the year, according to seasonality. And if you've traded in August before, you know it can get very slow. People go on vacation. Wall Street goes on vacation. And a lot of times it feels like you're just playing it against the computers rather than real people. So you can see August here, very choppy. It doesn't really do much until you start running up towards the end of the month. And that's usually due to end of month rebalancing and, you know, people are trying to window dress and make, you know, make their returns look good, especially Wall Street and institutions trying to look good for their clients. So lots of times you'll see run ups going into the end of the month. But I just want to show you that because the seasonality, I mean, it's been pretty accurate uh, in terms of 2023. We had a great July, which historically does good anyways. I believe we did pretty good in June as well. I don't think we really got any major pullback in June. May, the sell in May and go away did not follow at all. We had a good May as well. Maybe a couple little small pullbacks, but otherwise we've been following the bull trend in these, you know, following months here. So maybe August will, you know, be somewhat accurate as the seasonality chart represents. So just keep an eye out for that. Maybe don't oversize in August because you might not be missing much. So just keep an eye on that. And now that we've gone over all of that, 
we went over the economic calendar. We went over some of the big earnings this week. And we also went over the seasonality chart just so you could see August and how it historically acts. We'll go ahead and get into the setups. So I got four this week. I would say it's mostly longs, but there is a one put trade and then one potential put trade, but it just depends. And that's going to be NVIDIA. Uh, it can go either way because that's an inside bar, but we'll go over that next. Right now, we're going to go ahead and get into Foot Locker. So I've actually been tracking this one for a good little minute just because it sold off so heavy during its earnings. I mean, it's down 30%. I really like the oversold plays. They bounce really good and they pay really good and you're getting a discount. And especially if it's a profitable company and they're trading at a relatively low price to earnings ratio, you know, you can find some really good opportunity and eventually, you know, Wall Street institutions will try to, you know, buy back in, try to get a discount and they'll start accumulating down here like you see. And then eventually you'll see that, you know, recovery. And also you're kind of getting a discount in terms of volatility, especially if it's been trading in a range like this. Implied volatility is going to be relatively low. It's not going to be too expensive, not over overpriced or anything. So you can see we do have a downtrend line here, uh, pretty much starting from when it gapped down on earnings. So you got to test one, you got to test two, you got to test three, you got to test four, and finally breaking out to the upside. So it's not a huge breakout or anything. You can see Closed up 3.67% on Friday, which means Monday could have some continuation. Honestly, it just depends. So for first price targets, the most obvious one for me is probably going to be this purple anchor VWAP. And how you draw an anchor VWAP, I'll go ahead and delete this real quick. You go ahead and select the anchor VWAP tool. You find like a gap or some price inflection point where probably had a lot of volume, a lot of volatility, and you want to have that be your starting point. And that's your anchor VWAP, and it'll go all the way into real time, which is right here. So you can see the first test of anchor VWAP, little rejection, another test of anchor VWAP, little rejection. Didn't quite make it up here. So you can see the anchor VWAP is a factor, and it will likely try to act as resistance. So that's why you probably want to use that as your first price target. It's going to be at about, you know, lower 27s or so, probably like 2705. Probably just go with 27 flat. So just watch 27 flat. If it can get over that and close over the anchor view up, obviously that takes you up to probably gap resistance right here. It's going to be like 3196. So this will probably be more like a further out swing trade. I mean, it's a pretty oversold play and it's still likely it's still trending under moving averages and, you know, still in a downtrend uh, on the higher time frames. So you do need to be patient with these kind of plays just because it's low doesn't mean it's going to bounce right away. A lot of times Wall Street institutions will, you know, accumulate for a little while down here and that will reflect in the price and you'll see a little bit of chop like you've been seeing. So I've been trying to be a little bit patient with this one, even though I've been tracking it since it gapped down. I haven't really wanted to enter yet. I've been waiting for something to set up. And finally, we do have this little downtrend breakout. So I'll go ahead and add it to the watch list and we'll look for calls on this one. For types of calls, I would probably go with two to three months of expiration at least, maybe at least 30 days if you want a little bit more risk. Uh, their earnings is coming up August 23rd, so you probably want to be out before then. If you wanted to hold through earnings and take that risk, obviously you're going to want really further out expiration, maybe even just stick to shares. Uh, you can't really go wrong with shares because they don't expire. So this could be a good long-term play. It honestly, just depends. I would probably have to look at the price to earnings ratio and look at some other stuff before I would be willing to buy this in the long term. But right now I'm seeing this short term technical setup to the upside. So we'll go ahead and look at calls on this and maybe we can find a long term opportunity later. So FL here looking at calls. All right, next we're going into Nvidia. So we actually had this on the watch list last week and it worked out really well. So we were looking at this trend line plus this back test level. And you can see this is it on Friday and this is it on Monday and it literally just ripped up. So it had a great setup for the calls that we were looking at. I might have gotten one little scalp in on Monday, but I didn't trade it after that. So props to you if you you know did a swing trade on this or got more than I did because I only did a little scalp off this general area after I saw a 30 minute confirmation holding the you know the 440 area and the trend line. I was able to get like a little you know one or two dollar scalp on the underlying and just traded some calls. So could have made way more, but either way, I'm glad that this setup was out just in case you know, people were able to catch it and make some money. So I do have it on the list again this week. Reason for that is because we do have an inside bar. So an inside bar is when the high and low of this bar stays within the range of the mother bar. So it'll stay within the high and the low of the previous bar. And that's called an inside bar. 
and it's actually a consolidation candle so it can break either way the way to trade it you just literally you just mark the high and low of the inside bar and then you just set alerts and you just wait for it to either break the high or you wait for it to break the low if it breaks the high you can look at a scalp you know trade some calls through the upside if it you know breaks down the low good signal for puts and you can probably trade it back down you know towards the trend line so that's for nvidia here and if you don't know how to set alerts you just right click after you you know mark your levels you right click you just hit add alert and you can just name it inside bar high hit save and you do the same thing right click the low name it inside bar low hit save and there you go and you just wait for one of the alerts to go off and that could give you a trade obviously your alert won't go off if it stays within the range but that's why you set the alerts and you wait for a 30 minute bar or a 15 minute bar at least you want to see a break over that or a break under the low and that'll give you confirmation so this could go either way so i'm looking at calls or puts on this it's just going to depend what direction it breaks out of the inside bar just make sure you set the alerts and you wait for a signal don't just you know take a guess let the let the chart tell you, let the daily bar tell you where it's gonna go next. So go ahead and set an alert at the high and low and just wait. And you could trade calls or puts on this depending on that. All right, next we're going into TLT. So this is a bond play. This is the 20 year treasury bond ETF, which has been relatively volatile lately, especially after the FOMC meeting and yields have been spiking up higher, hence the bonds have been dumping a little bit. But now you can see TLT pulling into 98.88, which is a support from right here. All it is is this low right here, and that's the 98.88. So you had a prior bounce here. I was actually looking at the support in the chat, and I posted this support in the chat a couple weeks ago, and it bounced pretty good. So literally at the same zone again, same level. You can see it, it tapped it very briefly and then close up half a percent on Friday. So you did have a somewhat positive reaction to support. I'm not sure if it'll do this exact bounce because as you know, or maybe if you're newer and you don't know, supports can actually get weaker over time depending on how many times it's been tested. So you, you know, you have your first initial bounce, you have your second, this would be our third uh, time off the area. And even if you added another one right here, you could even count this as, you know, one, two, three four so this 99.35 to 98.88 you could count that as just like a general zone we've actually bounced off of it at least three or four times so does that mean you know this could be getting weaker absolutely but if we can get back over 100 maybe on the tlt i'd feel a little bit more confident about it running back up into supply and the supply is going to be right here there'll be a rally base drop zone so you got a rally base drop very large one and if it can get back over 100 obviously it'd just take you to you know 102 where the supply zone starts and probably see resistance about there we also do have a little downtrend line here that's your downtrend line uh, you can see there's kind of a little false breakout and went back within so this trend line will stay valid you probably even use that as a price target over time if it's able to hold over this 98.88 if it's not able to hold over the 98.88 obviously that's kind of a scary area uh you really don't have anything holding you up here and then you have a gap right below so that's where it can start getting scary so you want to keep 98 flat at least as your risk off if this doesn't work you probably want to start looking at something else and you know be careful and if it breaks you know just wait for it to reclaim before trying to re-enter again so that's for TLT, looking at calls, holding up support. This is probably its third or fourth test of the general area. So hopefully it can hold up here. One thing I don't like about it, you can see the slow stochastic is crossed to the downside. So that could be some hint of momentum slowing just a little bit. You can see the last time it bounced, the slow stochastic actually crossed up. So if you wanted to wait for the slow stochastic to cross back up or maybe like the MACD or something, so I recommend the slow stochastic. It's got pretty good signals. If you want to wait for that to cross back up, you can do that as well. So you'd have support holding plus the slow stochastic crossing back up. And that would be, you know, a good confirmation of it holding. And you can see the slow stochastic crossed up over here at a nice run. Crossed up right here at a nice run. Uh, crossed up right here at a nice little run. So the slow stochastic works pretty good. So if you want to wait for that before trying to enter, you can do that as well. And I might do that myself. And like I said, we want to see it getting over 100. So if I can get over 100 and close over 100, I'll be willing to look at a swing trade for calls, maybe about 30 days out at least, and just play up into the trend line off the support. So that's for TLT, looking at calls. All right, next we're going into 
Costco. So this is ticker symbol cost. This is actually going to be a put trade just because it's pulling up into this 564.75. You can see this is a uh, resistance right here. Pretty big one. We could go to the one week. So you can see this is the 564.75. And you can see we briefly closed under it with this weekly bar at 563.32. So it wasn't too far under it. And it's not the most bearish one week bar yet either. So you want to be careful with that. Obviously uh, your risk off is going to be if it, you know, starts closing over this on the one week, cause that would just take you straight, you know, probably up to the next 6, 12, 27, which comes from right here. So this is the only area holding you down at the moment. So you just want to be careful with that. But I just want to show you the resistance. And that's all the way from August 2022. We had a pretty big pullback since it's trending up pretty good. We want to add some moving averages here. See how the 9 and 21 is looking. So your green, this is the 9 EMA. And then your yellow, that's your 21 EMA. And it's a really good uptrend indicator. And also works as supports. Uh, you can play the back tests to the upside, which you see works really good. Uh, you get a back test here, the bounce, back test, back test, another back test, another back test etc. So you probably want to use these as price targets if you're going to short up here. And another signal you want to see, uh, this is an inside bar actually. So we want it to get under the 562.62. So we'll go ahead and add an alert, name it breakdown Friday's low. So that's Friday's low and also an inside bar. Uh, I won't mark the inside bar high just because uh, I don't need it. I'm not planning on trading upside on this. So I just want to see the 562.62, which is Friday's low get taken out. Uh, first price target, obviously going to be 559.20s or so at the 9 EMA. Second, if it can close under the 9 EMA, they'll take you down to the 21 or also this little previous resistance at 546.05. And that's right here. There's also a little demand zone right here. Uh, this could be a good price target as well. So rally based rally demand zone. So you see, since we're trading over all these things, we're just using things below as price targets. And that's what you have to do when you're shorting into strength. Uh, you want to be extra careful. You want to take extra precautions. And our extra precautions are waiting for Friday's low to get taken out. Uh, making sure it stays under 564.75 as well. If it's not staying under that, we won't take it. So we want to stay under 564.75 and 562.62 in order to take us to the next moving average and in order to take us to the next demand zone. And it's as simple as that. If that's not met, we don't take it. So just make sure it stays under those. Uh, and then make sure you're zooming out to your one day chart using your nine EMA as, as your first price target. Go ahead and mark up this demand zone. I actually didn't mark it correctly. There it is. So demand zones are open of your base candle down to the low. So it's going to be about 554.80s or so. Uh, 554.48 precisely the so first price target 9 EMA second if it can close under the 9 EMA it's going to be demand and that's as low as I could put it and like I said that's if it can stay under 564.75 which is your 2022 resistance I showed you and then it can also get under 562.62 which is Friday's low as for cost looking at puts be careful with it it's trading over your moving averages still an uptrend so let's stochastics actually cross down so that's good I like that even though it could be a false signal if we can get under Friday's low. Could be a good signal as well. You'd have a couple things going in your favor there. Slow stochastic, Friday's low breaking, and the 564.75 resistance as well. So this would probably just be a short-term put trade. Nothing crazy. If you did want to buy a further out put swing, you'd want to go pretty far out. And that can get a little expensive with cost of, you know, 563.32. So maybe just stick to day trades on this or, you know, just shorter-term contracts and make sure... I wouldn't personally swing shorter term contracts. I would just stick to day trades just to be safe. So cost here, looking at puts, just make sure you wait for the criteria to get met. All right, next we're going into the indexes. Uh, usually we go over SPY first, but it looks like I had QQQ right here. So we might as well just go over this while it's still here. So last week we were focused on this 372.85. We want to see a pullback into this before trying to buy it up to the upside. It didn't reach it exactly, but I mean, it tested the general area. If I showed you on the futures, this same area actually did get tapped. So I could even show you real quick. So that zone I showed you in QQQ is this precisely. And you can see Monday, it actually did dip a little bit lower and tapped that area uh, basically right on the head. If not, you know, really, really close to it. So this is the area we want to see hold up and the area you wanted to be looking for, you know, dip buys at. Like I said last week, not buying breakouts, not buying, you know, on up days, looking for discounts on, you know, more red days, maybe flat days. And 
that's where you're going to get the best risk to reward. So I just want to show you that, you know, the zone we're looking at on QQQ did actually tap on the futures. So maybe uh, go check out the futures as well. I track both personally. So because sometimes on the futures, you're going to see something you're not going to see on the ETF just because the futures trade after hours and they have longer trading dates. So it's going to have a little bit more data. That's why you see the NQ or the NASDAQ futures did get tapped on our zone that we were covered here last week. So I just want to show you that real quick. But you can see also holding up the uptrend line, you got to test one, test two, test three. This was a test four, pulled back really hard. This, uh, the market sold off very violently this day and then literally just got bought right back up. But it sold off right into the trend line. So that's arguably why it bounced. Not exactly surprising. Uh, I mean, the VIX didn't go too crazy on the sell off. It had a maybe like an up 10% day, but never got over you know, 1553 or any of the levels that we covered uh, pretty much every week. So it got bought back up. Another thing why we sold off this day was uh, speculations on the Bank of Japan. And once the BOJ finally came out with their policy, I think the market liked it. The uh, USD JPY pair actually kind of went up too. So market liked it. So for this week on QQQ, obviously it's holding up your uptrend. So can't really think too bearish here. Um, I also can't really put it too much higher just because i mean resistance is only right here at 387.98 but we did have a pretty big update on friday so i'm guessing mondays might have a little bit of continuation uh, it honestly just depends another thing we were looking at last week was this major supply this is a big drop base drop zone you can see this big one week base candle that's our supply we finally had a little reaction the week prior uh, it only pulled back very briefly though and then obviously it got bought back up last week but it's still inside the supply so this is not a great area to enter call swings but it's been good to day trade still to the upside uh like i said last week i was looking for you know dips around this area uh, to trade calls off you know for day trades and stuff on the qqq uh, but this week we're not really around that area this time so i would still be willing to buy the dip and stuff even though we're inside one week supply as long as we're holding up this uptrend line i'd be fine with that but like i said i'm not looking at call swings on qqq just because of that one week supply zone i just showed you and that's this little red box that we're in right now so it's really not too much for me right here on qqq this week like i said might have a little bit more room up to this and that's probably about as high as i could put it another thing you do have going for you still trending over the moving averages uh, that was another thing i've been covering well, the past few weeks you want to be adding at the moving averages use the 9 and 21 combination uh, you get your 9 and your 21 use that on the one day that's where you're going to get your best discounts instead of you know buying way over it and buying breakouts and stuff uh, adding on dips get better risk to reward uh, better discounts better premium pretty much better everything you just kind of got to go against the grain a little bit and kind of go against the crowd because you're buying on uh, red days uh, maybe even half days you're not buying on these huge green days so that's the only thing when you're adding at moving averages it's a little bit different and uh, you know you're not chasing with the crowd you're waiting for it to come down I mean, it's some room to breathe and then it can come back up as long as it's trending over your 9 and 21 combo it's a great short to medium term uh, uptrend reading the 9 and 21 so use it wisely another thing qqq has going for it right here you can see the slow stochastic is actually crossed up positive so that's good it crossed over uh right here it confirmed we had a couple of red days, nothing crazy, but uh, the slow stochastic was correct. It did, you know, pull back just for a little bit, had some weakness, showed some signs of momentum slowing, but now uh, I was able to cross back on the 23rd, or no, I'm sorry, the 26th of July. And once it curled back up, just came right back up. So it's a good reading. It's a good little momentum tool. I would definitely add it to your chart. So the bulls do have that in their favor. And then, like I said, I could see it up to maybe here maximum and that's about it and then we you know come into august with august coming up um, i'm expecting chop personally nothing crazy and you know you just got to be careful with that probably not gonna size into any crazy swing trades maybe just add some long-term shares of stuff but that's about it nothing oversized with options this month more than likely so that's for qqq like i said i could see that you know 388 or 387 98 area maybe just a general area maybe three 387 flat and that's about as high as i can put it for right now but it's looking good for both still uptrend holding 921 combo holding 
so stochastic still holding up so looks bullish for now all right next we're going into the spy so nothing really changed too much on the spy it was able to finally break over the 78.6 fibonacci we have been looking at i thought i'd see a little bit of resistance actually last week uh, and just head into demand which i'll show you right here this was the demand zone i was looking for it to pull back into and we could look at little dip buys there uh, for day trading it wasn't able to get down there but it did hold the 78.6 pretty much good and then um we're still inside one week supply so it's the same thing as qqq we're still in this major one week supply this is a rally based drop zone from 2022 so this is a no buy zone for me in terms of uh call swing trades uh for buying call options and holding overnight just because we're still in this big supply so it just seems pointless no good risk to reward here yeah i mean it kind of sucks that you know spy wasn't able to get into the demand zone i think i still traded some spy calls last week uh, just with camera pivots i didn't use the demand zone because we didn't get down there now we just have this inside bar i would definitely mark that this trading view chart though showing this 452s as the low that's incorrect we can actually go to the SPX instead, just because this low is not right on this chart. And I actually marked the inside bar high and low on this. So the inside bar high is gonna be 4590.16, and the inside bar low is gonna be 4564.01. And this is a pretty nice inside bar. So you can see the major difference between SPY and SPX. The SPY low is not correct on that daily bar. This is correct. So you'd want to go ahead and mark this one, not the inside bar of SPY. Mark the inside bar of SPX, just because trading views somehow messed that up. Go ahead and mark that, and um, we'll wait for the high to get taken out, wait for the low to get taken out. That could give a great you know, put trade to the downside if it breaks the low, or a great little call scalp to the upside if it breaks out of that and then honestly this inside bar high is not too much higher than where we closed on friday so could be good like i said the only thing i don't like about spy here uh is call swing trades just because we're inside the one week supply it's the same thing on spx but this is the rally based drop supply zone still inside of it so you just got to be careful in that area and you can still trade calls i mean obviously it's been working you can see an update here a little update here update here uh people are still buying at the you know 4500s regardless if it's inside supply or not uh, on the short term but eventually you know those supply zones can come into fruition and you got to be really careful because eventually you know people could start selling they start taking profits and that makes a new liquidity zone in the same supply zone that we've been marking so for spy this week just watching this inside bar high and inside bar low uh waiting for one of those highs or lows to get taken out to make a decision for a short-term trade most likely a day trade for me to be convinced on shorts or like a put swing trade on spy or qqq i have to see the previous week lows get taken out so uh, the previous week low of this one let me just hide this real quick so the previous week low is gonna be right here at 45.28 i would need to see spx take out 45.28 for me to feel you know bearish so we could even mark that as well this is the weekly low we can even get rid of the fibonacci just because it's the same area as the 45.28 so if the 45.28 gets taken out It'll take you into the little demand zone and then the demand zone will obviously have to break next in order to go lower but the 4528 is what i would have to see break to be truly bearish or feel like i could enter you know a spy put swing so that's for the spy i just wanted to show you on the spx just because they somehow messed up this daily bar but it's the same thing so go ahead and mark the inside bar high and low on spx and wait for a direction all right next we're going into the iwm so last week we were focused on this rally based rally demand zone i wanted to see price pull into that before trying to look at calls or you know look for upside and as soon as it pulled in literally gapped up the next day so this was the first test this was the next day just absolutely crazy and very accurate so this is a great rally based rally demand zone obviously i only had us up to the supply that we marked and you can see exactly why. I mean, once we got up into the supply here on Thursday, big sell-off. Uh, the broad market sold off as well. Spy and QQQ both, you know, were up and had a brutal beatdown. And then the next day, obviously, everything gapped up. So this has been the trading range, you know, this little demand zone to supply. And you can see exactly why I couldn't put it any higher than the supply, just because it's been struggling. So I'll go down to the 15-minute. You can see we actually tapped the demand zone right at the close uh and if you know if you bought down there uh, on your confirmation of a decent reaction to the demands 15 minute candle a really nice gap up 
So supply and demand zones work very well. I really recommend checking out my supply and demand zone crash course video. Uh, it's free. You just go check it out on our YouTube channel. I go over all four sequences, the rally base rally. I go over drop base rally, drop base drop, and rally base drop. So there's two supply zones and two demand zones and four different sequences. So go check them out. But you can see this is a rally base drop for IWM. This is a rally base rally demand. And then same down here, another rally base rally demand right here. So you can see they work great. You gotta bounce here, bounce here for this demand. Uh, you gotta pull back, bounce, gap up on this demand. So it's the same thing as last week. You'd wanna see it pulling back into demand before you know trying to buy this just because it's back inside supply now. So honestly, you can maybe look for a little resistance here if it decides to stay in a chop zone. There's also regular resistance, 197.66. Top here, top here. So you got regular resistance, overall supply zone. And the supply zone goes up to 199.30s. Maybe look for a little bit of resistance here. Obviously there's a inside bar from Friday. So you got your inside bar low, inside bar high there. We can even mark this green for the high. So inside bar high, 196.95, inside bar low, 195.50. And you can wait for it to break out of that before trying to make a decision on direction. I'm guessing it looks like it could see some resistance here just because we double topped a little bit at 197.66. We got overhead supply. It would just need to take out the inside bar low at 195.50. So it would have to get under this, this little red area to get down to demand again. So that's for IWM. Maybe look for a little pullback, but also don't make a decision yet until you see the inside bar high or low get taken out. All right, next we're going into the DXY. My usual list is a little bit different. I usually go over VIX first and then DXY, but it looks like I had everything kind of mixed up today. So we'll just go how I have it right here. So we're going to DXY now. Last week we were focused on 182 getting reclaimed. Uh, it closed right here last Friday. And then we had another run up on Monday for the dollar, just a little... 0.3%. But either way, look at 182. You get a bottom here, you get a bottom here. Pull back into 182 on Thursday, and then it's totally ripped up to the upside. And this is likely due to the Fed. But either way, 182 is just a great support. You got to test one, test two, test three, huge rip to the upside. Now you can see the dollar pulling into this downtrend line. You can see it also tapped our previous 102 uh, support area that we probably covered this a couple weeks ago same area and rejected off it very briefly you can see the little wick nothing crazy this week i could probably see it you know just staying at 102 max the maybe the downtrend line as well obviously to break out of the downtrend line if it breaks out of the downtrend line i could see 103 which is the 2020 covid peak and that's that's really about it but otherwise if this 102 and this downtrend line if we stay under this probably just gonna head back to 182. I personally would still like to see a little pullback in the market, especially for the SPY and QQQ. So we'd want to see the dollar go higher for that. Volatility is still super low and there's a lot of optimism and recession fears are kind of losing their grips. So it's been very crazy, very, very crazy in the markets. But I mean, the dollar here following technicals really well. Once it got over 182, it's basically just a straight shot to 102. And you know, I believe this dollar spike on Thursday played a huge role in why we sold off really hard on Thursday as well, especially for equities. So if we can see some more moves like that, that'd be great. Uh, I love currency volatility because it brings, you know, equities more volatility. So just watch this downtrend line for DXY, watch this 102. If it can break over that, great. If it can't, it's probably gonna head back to 182 and it'll likely be bullish for the market if it can't clear over this. All right, and lastly, we're going into VIX. And honestly, going into VIX last is just very fitting because the VIX sucks. So last week, I believe we were just focused on it, just holding these bottoms. I'm trying to remember what we were looking at. So you can see we've actually had this 1273 marked. Uh, I've had this for, you know, ever since it put in the low. Actually on Thursday, I had mentioned in the chat that it was pulling into this 1273 and it literally just rocketed off of it. I was actually busy this day. I had to drive out of town, so I didn't get to act on this, unfortunately, but it had a great double bottom bounce. Obviously double bottoms not confirmed until it gets over the resistance level, but still just a nice, you know, bottom bounce. And the overall market just absolutely tanked before gapping back up the next day. But you can see nothing's changed. I mean, we closed here about 13s on Friday. And last Friday, we closed right about 13s. So just a little bit lower. It's the same thing as last week. We're holding 1273. We need to get it over 1410, which is a 2021 low. 
also get over 1473 which is also a 2021 low and you can see it was able to get over that first one briefly but once it hit the second 2021 low and also 15 uh, it just pretty much pooped its pants and just headed back down another thing we were looking for was a close over the 21 ema for a good signal you can see on thursday it actually did close over the 21 ema uh, just for one day though usually you want to see follow through so you want to see one day closing over the 21 and then uh, day number two also closing over that for continuation it was not able to do that so definitely wasn't a great signal and you, you don't always want to just go off the first close when it breaks a level or breaks a moving average you want to see multiple and also you want to see follow through that's you know that's where your confirmation comes into place when you have multiple closes over your level or over your moving average so this week i mean it's still trending uh, under the 921 combo so i'm guessing i probably just head back down to 1273 or just keep chopping this general area. Obviously, it would need a break under the 1273 to go lower. That would be bullish for the market. And then basically just the same thing as last week. I mean, I personally want to see it getting over 1473, close over that. If it can close over 1473, I want to see it closing over 1553 next. And that could bring the market down, you know, bring some better discounts and we could buy the dip eventually in the SPY and look for swing trades and stuff. It's just a little overextended right now, so I'm just waiting for volatility to come back, waiting for some discount zones uh, in order to jump in some swing trades for calls. I'd even be willing to buy puts if we start closing over 1553, getting some spy puts, or taking out the one week low we were looking at on spy. I'd be willing to, you know, look at some spy puts on that to, you know, 30, 60 days out, something like that. But, you know, the VIX not giving any signal yet to jump in spy puts, so um, I haven't jumped in any yet. For a swing trade i've been trading you know day trading puts and stuff occasionally but nothing uh 30 days out or anything like that which the vix is volatility for anywhere from 27 to 34 days i believe something around that threshold so for the vix like i said it needs to get back over 1410 1473 and 1553 uh, that's for the bears and then for the bulls obviously it needs to get under 1273 uh, to break lows but otherwise it's doing nothing still holding the bottom pretty good uh, so you could argue that you know there's still a chance it could spike back up you also have slow stochastic positive crossover that obviously just came from the one green bar we have and it was able to cross it back up so i mean that signal still holding there could be something worth looking into and it could be a little sign of uh, it crawling back up but like i said still trending under the nine still trending under the 21 wasn't able to get over 1410 wasn't able to get over 1473 or 1553 so obviously the you know the vix looks like it's still going to go lower just based off of that you have one crossover so that's good you have support holding so that's good but you have no levels closed over you have nothing so that's why you really can't say that it's you know back in play here this is kind of contrarian if you want to look at vix calls here or start looking at spy puts it's definitely contrarian because you don't have any of the confirmations other than this little support holding and uh this little slow stochastic that's your only two signs of volatility coming back here. And that's about it. So wait for a little bit more, more signals if you want to be bearish uh, on the more medium, medium term. Because right now, it's just not looking like volatility is going to come back yet. We just need to see a little bit more. This was our one sign of hope. And uh, next day, I mean, it's, you know, back down 7%. So you need to see a little bit more from it. Break over our three levels we looked at. Because otherwise, you know, like I said, we have the support holding and slow stochastic crossing up. So that could be good. That's all I got for you guys this week. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our Xtrays YouTube channel. I'm going to get this chopped up, edited, and sent out. Hopefully, I won't get it up too late. Hopefully, the setups work out this week. Last week, we had a pretty good list. Uh, and video was great, especially Netflix even bounced off our demand zone a couple times. So it made, made good call scalps and stuff. But just, you know, stay safe. Don't, you know, oversize until August. Showed you the seasonality chart. It's really, you know, nothing of, nothing of substance uh, in terms of history. So just be careful. But I love you guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our Extras YouTube channel. And I'm out.